Hey, hey, it's late in the day. Here with Easy Jeezy. A final attempt to make a one shot video. My editing software is down for the count. Something's going on. I can't figure it out. It's been days. I'm not uh, the biggest high tech type person. I want to show you what I've been working on though. Uh, I got some of this indoor outdoor carpet from Home Depot. It's called Black Ebony. It weighs nothing. It's uh, some sort of a poly. It didn't come with the description of what it was. But it was like $4.38 a running foot and it was six feet wide. So for $16 I had enough of this to redo the, the carpet on the floor of the, the Baja right here. Um, where the seat was. There's a flat board that goes across there. I used it as a pattern and I put down, I had some house carpet in there and I just, as, since I put these uh, new seats in here, it's been a game changer. These were part of a deal that I got with a desert race car over here. They came in it and they were a little too big for the size of the car and I thought they'd be a little bit too heavy for what I wanted to do. So I took them out, they've been sitting around for a year, and, and putting those in has motivated me. Uh, I like the way they look, I like the way they feel, and that caused me to get the uh, steering wheel. And uh, I want to thank Big W. Uh, he and I have visited each other and met in person several times, and he's a wonderful guy with a great channel, and some of you already know that. And he gave me this... Uh, altimeter that he wasn't using and yesterday Mary and I drove up to uh, Estes Park Trail Ridge uh, Road well just Estes Park um, Rocky Mountain National Park that's what it is uh, Trail Ridge Road is part of that system but it went right up to 8,000 just like it was supposed to and that was really cool to have that along for the ride thank you again very much uh, spruced up the wheels Still got to do the brush guards, uh, got that carpet, put it on the inside, and I bought, what was it, uh, four feet of that stuff? Yeah, six foot wide, a four by six piece, and I had enough to do the inside of the trunk. Uh, first I made a pattern out of a piece of cardboard, just laid it in there and, and trimmed it, and then uh, laid that on the carpet, and it, it goes all the way to the bottom of the trunk. And it's, I left the cardboard underneath it to give it a little support and cushion off the wires and I'm really tickled the way that turned out. Uh, I'm sure it's going to get dirty. I really do need to put a seal in or it's all going to be looking like that in short order. And uh, What did I have in there? I had some kind of a piece of carpet and I, I just set toolboxes and things on it and, and that worked out pretty good. What else have I done in the last week or so? I added uh, a three-quarter inch sway bar that I already had. I know they work good because I tried it on the tub buggy. It has a link pin front end and I did get the bar and these clamps to fit on there. Seems to me it was a struggle and I just test drove it a little bit and and I thought well this is great for the street. It handles like it's on rails but uh, I don't think it's going to work for off-roading type of thing and you know you look at it and then you look you, it was so obvious on that car it might be obvious on this one to some people too but I left it with the bolts secured in the front instead of the back uh, to give me the shock clearance I want ease to work on and that way it's very easy for me to take off in the event I want to use a tow bar a conventional VW tow bar or want to go off-roading to the degree that this would become a problem and I think the only time this would really become a problem is with the type of driving that I personally do is if you're on that washboard type road the wheels are going to do things together because one wheel is going to influence the other that's the whole idea of a sway bar and since I've been talking trips I thought this would be a real good thing to put on because when you're on those interstate highways and you get side winds, they really do push you around and when the big semis come by, if they're going fast and there's side winds, the turbulence does bother you, people in RVs and so on and so forth. So I thought this would make that aspect of it more comfortable. We've had one on Valerie 
for just years and years. And this one is kind of put on upside down because there is a, uh, a beam adjuster right there. We put it on the lower beam. My son wanted to have the dropped look. This is a 66 bug. It has the ball joint front end as well. And putting it on, pointing down. Now one of these might be a link pin and one a ball joint. But I'm telling you right now that they both, you know. And I had this one on my link pin. So I don't know what the difference is. Uh, I curl this one to be up so that it wouldn't be in the way. And I, in order to get it on there, I did have to cut the tubes as you can see. And I don't know if you can see up there, the tubes are still there. I just loosened the lower front end bolt and pivoted the piece that I cut. It was all held on with one bolt and then you've got the two bolts on this uh, side, on both sides. Horrible weld job somebody did on that. No, it wasn't me. It was on the car, but I'm not so sure on some days mine isn't that bad. <laughs> Actually, let's see what the other side looks like because I think it was broke and I re-welded it. Yeah, mine's just as bad, so I can't, I can't criticize somebody else's stuff. <laughs> oh, wire feed, flux core. Yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And we'll be back with another one as soon as I can. Get that software figured out. Easy jeezy. Out. Oh.